So, uh, good morning, everyone. So, my name is Stefan Szymanski. Uh, I'm a professor of sport management here uh, in the uh, School of Kinesiology. So, I want to tell you a little bit about what I do uh, in terms of uh, international teaching using video conferencing equipment. Um, so, uh, maybe I should start by explaining sort of what my problem is so that you can see why I need to do what I do. So, <clears throat> as you can tell, I'm not from these parts. I came to Michigan four years ago. I teach sport management. What does that mean? Well, I'm an economist, actually, and I teach about the way that sports leagues function as businesses and economic activities. Um, now, you may or may not be aware, but the most popular sport in the world is <laughs> soccer, football, as we call it in the rest of the world. Um, and I need to teach that to my students. Now, my students are familiar with some other games, a game called football, which is uh, not familiar to me historically, this thing, baseball, basketball, and that's all very familiar to them, and they don't really know very much about the way things are organized. And there is a tendency to think that the way things are organized in other countries are stupid. I get that from my students here. <laughs> But it's not, it's not an American thing. I get that from students if I teach in the UK, if I teach in Germany, if I teach in any other part of the world. Whatever anybody else does is stupid. So there te tends to be this view that the way that sports are organized in the United States are, is interesting to Americans, but not the way it's organized in the rest of the world is not interesting to uh, Americans. And the way that sports are organized in the rest of the world are interest, is interesting to the rest of the world, but is not interesting to Americans. And my job here is to actually teach them, no, there's actually a lot of interest in understanding both. And, why, and the reason it's inter interesting to understand both is because they're both incredibly successful. The American sports model works really, really well. It's a very successful organization and business. And the world of soccer out there is also incredibly successful and strong and powerful business. So it's really interesting to understand why both work. So I can stand up. I could give you, I, if I brought my slides, I could give you an hour's presentation on why you should understand the soccer business and why it's different from American sports and what the differences are and um, how that produces different outcomes uh, in terms of both business and on the field. However, Talking in the, me talking in the abstract doesn't really cut it with most of my students in my experience. They don't really get what's going on, which is why I wanted to set up a course, and initially with a, a, a university, the German Sports University in Cologne, with colleagues in Germany, to try and get German students to talk about what they think of sports as organizations, to talk with American students about what they think about the way sports are organized. So that's the, that, was the old, that was the original motivation for me starting to do this. And uh, I, uh, we started, I started doing about three years ago, so it was quite soon after coming. And that meant negotiating a number of challenges about how to organize this. So um, what are the challenges? Well, so firstly, obviously the first thing we need is video conferencing equipment. And Todd and Philomena are here. And you, if you're going to do this kind of thing, you need unbelievable amounts of technical support, particularly if, like me, you're, you're fairly illiterate when it comes to these things. Um, it's, there are, the university has, but this university has extraordinary resources and really good people who will help you do this kind of thing and take all of that worry out of your hand uh, in most of the cases and help you get it uh, set up. So, um, so what, what was actually what we needed to work with Germany, we used the, again, on the advice of Todd, we, we bought, well, I got kinesiology to buy the equipment that was necessary to, to do the video conferencing. Then we had to get the Germans to buy the equipment as well. Turned out that their equipment didn't work terribly well, and we actually had some quite sort of some difficult problems getting them set up. Um, they actually, German universities don't have a lot of money. So it actually was a bit hard for them to, to, to sort that out. But eventually, we got that sorted out. And then, and then we had to schedule classes. And that's not so easy, working with the time differences. And again, most many of you are probably familiar with Europe and familiar with the idea that it's six hours ahead. So we have to have the classes in the morning here, so it works in the afternoon there. 
Uh, in, mostly I've had the classes starting at 8.30 a.m. in the morning here. Students love it. They just can't get enough of those 8.30 in the morning classes. Uh, so that's been, that's, that's quite a challenge. And then, of course, daylight saving. I don't know, again, you probably never think about this. Daylight saving is, I wish we could abolish this. Europe just and America are not synchronized on this. They do it at different times. So there's a week and you've got to constantly work out, well, which dates? Is it five hours this week or is it six hours? And that's a, that's a huge problem. Um, I also, uh, and I'll come on to that as well, I also do a similar course with Tokyo, which we're just about to start next week. And that's even worse for time. <laughs> and daylight saving this weekend did me no favors at all. So I, I, one thing, if you want to do video conferencing with, with Japan, I don't know if you ever thought about this, but it's almost impossible on Eastern time. Because there's a 30, they're 13 hours ahead. And try finding something, try finding a time of day that works 13 hours ahead. And unfortunately, the, t the, the I, I, there I work with the University of Waseda. They don't start until 9 o'clock in the morning. If they started at 8, life would be easy, but they don't. They start at 9. And so if you think that's 9, that's going to be uh, 8 o'clock in the evening here. And that's about the only gap, that's about the only window for video conferencing that works. So there are, so there, that's one of the big, big, big um, challenges that you have, is, is the timing and the scheduling. Um, but then, uh, so uh, what actually is the content of this and how do, how, how do we set it up? Well, um, one thing I really, in terms of the, the collaboration with Germany, with Cologne, it's really relatively straightforward in trying to think of a list of topics uh, in relation to sports, how it's done in the US and how it's done in um, Europe. So for example, um, a, a one topic for a week might be player contracts. So the way that a contract works for a sports uh, a professional athlete in the United States is different from the way a contract will work in Europe. And what's more, fans know about this. People know all about the way that contracts work. So fans care about who's on their team, they care about who gets to stay on their team and what the, what the situation is. So what you tend to get is a situation where, again, Europeans will know all about the, 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 the movement of players and the contracts that the players have in Europe, but they won't know anything about the American system, where the, Europe, where, the, where the students here will know all about the American system. So again, getting them to talk about that and getting to think through that. So we have a list of topics that we go through in the course. What I tend to do is, in, during in the semester, in a, so in a 15 uh, week course, I actually won't want to be video conferencing all that time. Usually the first half of the course I will have just with the students talking about comparing um, Europe and the United States, both um, from a sports perspective, but also culturally. You have to have these cultural discussions about, you know, what's a joke in German and how German feel about various things and what they do know, what they don't know, and so forth. And then uh, have about uh, five to ten video conference sessions where we have discussions. Usually try to get the students to present to each other about different topics. So they will. So, for example, we might ask the students to, in my example, give an explanation of how a player contract would work, or how collective bargaining works in Major League Baseball. Would be a presentation that our students might make to the Germans, and indeed, and in return, the German students might explain uh, how players are transferred from clubs um, in Europe, um, how that mechanism works. Um, now, of course, in the formal teaching environment of the class. Um, Again, I'm sure you're all familiar, it's hard enough to get undergraduates to get animated and start contributing and be very lively in class. It's actually even more difficult when you're doing this by video conferencing because good as the technology is, it's still, you still got, if you've got a class of 20 people on the other side, you can't always see very clearly who's talking. And so there are some issues there about um, uh, about, about being able to see who's what's going on, which can make the students sort of step back a little bit and become even a little bit less engaged. So, you, so my, one, one thing about that is I, my belief firmly is that the technology on this is going to advance in leaps and bounds in the next few years. So the investment I put in now is going to pay off in the future when it gets much better. Um, but on the other hand, I think it's also, it, is also, uh, it is also a problem. One way we try to deal with that is by having the students interact uh, offline. Uh, and we set up a Facebook page. 
I think that's what young people still use Facebook. I mean, again, you, you know, that, and we almost need an, an, an advisor on which social media we should be using <laughs> in any given week. But, um, but, but we set up a Facebook page to try and, and, and actually ask the students to interact with each other and get to have conversations. And, and, to, and to some extent, the students can actually become, build a relationship through their Facebook relationship. Um, so uh, uh, so um, the, uh, uh, sorry, I, one, one other um, challenge I should mention is that um, the semesters run at different times in mm -hmm. Germany. Actually, one of these interesting, interesting fun fact, um, the, the German Sports University and the University of Waseda have exactly the same semester dates, exactly the same. So if we could only get Michigan to move to their semester dates, everything would be easy. But, apart, but, so, um, but there are some challenges there. And, and one of the challenges is assessment. And one thing you want to try and do is to try and get them to do some joint work, joint projects. Um, one problem, one challenge I found with that was in the German system, the student, the, 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 it was hard, the, the, how to phrase this, the professors in Germany found it hard to persuade their students that this was a, an assessment that was to be taken seriously. Mm -hmm. so we get situations where a, German, a, a, a Michigan student would come to me and said, oh, the Cologne student said this, this project doesn't matter, so they don't really, we're not really going to do very much work on it. Which is a little, a little unfortunate. Uh, but again, cultural things. Germans can be really, really blunt about stuff. They're not being rude. That's just the way they are. They just say it as it is. Um, and that can sometimes put people aback. You know, nice Midwestern manners don't always <laughs> climb, climb over that. But um, uh, so, so, so uh, the, the uh, perhaps one other thing I should say is, of course, the language of all of this is English. And again. Getting, now, in, in Germany, that's really not so much of a problem because most, most educated Germans speak fairly fluent English. And I'm working, we're working with master's level students in Germany, so they're that little bit older. But again, there's that whole thing about, you know, one thing, the German, for the Germans, it's, well, they're undergraduates, and, you know, why are we working with undergraduates? And for the Americans, sometimes, why don't they understand the English, you know, when, when they understand what we just said, you know, and so there are some, there are some issues you have to work through there. But overall, I think it's a, 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 it's a, it's an incredibly positive experience. I think it's something that, that, that is really powerful and something I want to continue to, to develop. As I say, I think the technology will make it better. And I also think ultimately, I want this to be a prelude to some kind of exchange. So my view is be that we could send students to Germany for a few weeks and on, a, on an exchange program, but only if they do this video conferencing first, because this is the way to get them to really understand something about the culture they're engaging with before they go, rather than just you know, turning up, going to a German bar and learning German beer culture, and that's it, right? Okay. That's it. Um, and just to say a, a, a few words about the Tokyo thing. The Tokyo thing is, is I mean, one reason for doing the Tokyo thing is uh, I'm actually, um, the, the, the course this semester I'm teaching is actually about the Olympics. Um, and I've been, we've been focusing on um, the Olympics in London, which, again, I know a lot about because I was there during the preparations, and that's my research area, so I can talk a lot about that. Um, Rio, where the next Olympics is going to be, um, and we had a video conference session with a researcher in Rio talking about what's going on in, what's going on there. Um, and Tokyo, which is where the 2020 Games are going to be. And I have a colleague in Waseda who is going to actually be involved in, in running the Olympics. So we, we have a course where we talk about that. Um, and then the other part of this, the final part of it is Detroit. I want to talk about the idea of why couldn't Detroit host an Olympic Games? And part of it is getting the students to think about why not Detroit in the context of why Tokyo, Rio, London actually got the game. Um, and so again, it, but from the video conferencing point of view, uh, it, it is actually uh, great to get the students to engage with, the, um, with, with Japanese students and to get some sense of, 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 of their perspective on the Olympic Games. The, the challenge, I would say, is that the, the level of English of Japanese students is, is, is really quite, again, they're master's level students, but it's that much harder, I think, for, for Japanese to speak fluent English than it is for Germans on the whole. Um, and of course, we don't have any Japanese. So. 
Um, so the, so that, that's, that's a challenge. But I think, again, I think there's a lot of potential in developing that. And particularly, one of the things is this is a project which, you know, we're 2020 is quite a, still quite a way away. So there's some, again, potential for us to, to develop, develop that. And for our Michigan students to have a real insight into how an Olympic Games is, is planned and progressed um, by using the video conferencing. Okay, so I think that covers it. So thank you for your um, attention. Thank you.